Hey everyone, today I'm going to be cooking um, baked egg rolls with Daikin radish slaw. And this is a meal from Plated, which is a food subscription that I've reviewed quite a few times. And you can find those reviews right here on my channel. And I'm going to leave a link below if you'd like to sign up. You get um, two plates free when you use my referral link, which is an entire meal free. So you get almost like half off. Yeah, you get half off, which is great. So make sure you use my code my link rather to get that promotion now um, I have all my ingredients right here on my cutting board and I didn't have to cut anything um, I'm probably gonna have to cut the scallions though but everything else was already pre and probably the mushrooms but everything else was already pre-cut for me and I mean and the tofu so there's like two things I gotta cut but everything else was pre-cut for me so I'm gonna give you a rundown of the ingredients and we're gonna look over this little recipe and here is their plated, um, how they have it looking. They give you a little glossary, so if you're brand new to cooking, you have a nice little glossary here that tells you, like, daikon radish. Daikon radish means large root in Japanese. This vegetable can weigh up to 100 pounds. They are white in color with a mild sweet flavor. See, I never knew that, and I think that's pretty cool that I get to learn something about the food that I'm cooking. Um, I don't usually cook Japanese food. I do try to dabble in Chinese, but, um... You know, I've never made egg rolls before, so I'm a little bit excited. Um, it says there's a little cooking tip, too. Sorry, my hair is a mess. It says lay your wonton wrappers on a clean, dry surface so that they don't become soggy. But be sure to rub just enough warm water on the edge, top, top edge, to seal well after rolling. Now, I've used wonton wrappers before. Um, I believe they're similar to egg roll wrappers. It's the same rule where you close them with water. Um, and be sure to read through the entire recipe before you begin cooking. Trust us, you'll be glad you did. Trust me, a lot of times, like I'll think, oh, I can go through this. No, read the entire ingredient, read the entire recipe before you start cooking, because it really helps you to just understand, like, what's the next step going to be in case you have to do something quick. So, um, I took everything out of the Ziploc bags. Everything came in these little Ziploc bags. With, um, so I've already taken everything out of the Ziploc bags. Everything comes in like a little bag like this. Um, some of these ingredients came in the big bag where I just had to take the big bag out of the fridge. Um, just for demonstration purposes, I mean, you can keep everything in their little Ziploc bags and not have to dirty another dish. I find it more helpful to put in little measuring cups. Um, the radish, there was a lot of radish. It was like over two cups of radish. So I put it all in here. I have mixing bowls ready. I have a pan on the stove and I have my baking sheet while well, my baking dish I'm be using Pyrex. Also let's do it ready to go so I have everything that they asked me to have. Now um they give you all the ingredients. The only two ingredients that um I do not that they do not give you is the medium pan, the baking sheet, vegetable oil, uh, salt, black pepper, so it's more than two, but it's not too many, it's stuff that you probably have at home already. So the first thing to do is to preheat the oven to 400 degrees, I have that ready to go. So the ingredients you need for this recipe are 14 ounces of tofu, then you're only going to use half this package, so if you have half a package of tofu, not sure if you guys have half a package of tofu just sitting in the fridge, but if you do, you're only going to need half, or you can double your recipe by using the whole container, just double everything I'm telling you to do, but you're going to need one of these, and you can find these in your local um, grocery store, they're usually in the vegetable aisle um, and this is what came with plated they sent a whole one so that means that after I do this recipe that they sent me the ingredients for I get half of it to use for my own leisure for whatever I want then the next ingredient you're gonna need is a fourth cup of shredded carrots they actually sent me one third cup of shredded carrots and if you're a little bit um, how do you shred carrots fast I would suggest picking up a grater that looks like this and just running your carrot through it it will help grade your carrot really really fast rather than having to sit there and chop it up the next ingredient you'll need is one half cup shredded red cabbage um, they actually did not give me a half a cup here either um, they were a little bit short on that but um, there's plentiful cabbage in there it's just about a half a cup and it's definitely a lot of red cabbage um, the next ingredient you would need is um, three scallions. I have three scallions right here. They're a type, they taste like onion, if you're unfamiliar about like what a scallion is. Two ounces of oyster mushrooms. I've never really cooked with these before, but they're rather flat. They kind of remind me of oysters, but I'm sure you could use regular mushrooms if you have just regular mushrooms. Um, two, tables, two tablespoons of hoisin sauce. You can find this in like the Asian part of your uh, grocery store. Um, ten wonton wrappers. I found, um, it says wonton wrappers, but these are egg roll wrappers. But I'm sure they're the same thing. You can find these in the frozen part of your, um, grocery store, usually near, like, the dumplings and stuff. Um, the next thing is four packets of soy sauce. It's just soy sauce. You can buy regular soy sauce. 
Um, three tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. Usually you can find this in the vinegar aisle of your store. I actually have some of that. Um, two tablespoons of sesame oil. It does have a very distinct different taste than regular oil, but you can use regular oil. I mean, it will make a minute difference, but if you can find the sesame oil, it does taste a little bit different. Um, and then there is the um, shredded daikon radish. Uh, radish, which I've never seen in my life, so this might be a little bit of an uncommon ingredient. I wouldn't even begin to tell you, um, maybe at a specialty Asian store. Um, the next ingredient is the one fourth cup shredded green cabbage, and they gave me over and beyond a fourth cup of cabbage. So, whoever was measuring it plated this day was just definitely off on their measurements. <laughs> but overall, I mean, obviously, I have enough for everything, I'm not really complaining. So, let's get started with the actual recipe. So first thing you do is you drain your tofu and you cut into one fourth inch dice and you reserve the rest of it and then you finally chop your shredded you finally chop your carrots, mine are already done thanks to plated um, and half of the shredded cabbage it's already done, you could shred some cabbage and half of a shredded red cabbage. So you would take a red cabbage, just half it and shred it. Um, rinse the scallions, trim them and discard the roots this part is the root and then thinly slice the, the white and light green parts, discarding the dark greens. White mushroom clean with a damp paper towel and finely chop. So I'm going to chop up everything, um, the remainder of everything, and we're going to start cooking the filling. So now everything is nice and chopped. They said that you're supposed to chop the carrots further and the cabbage, but I'm going to leave them just the way they are. I like it to be a little bit crunchy, but my tofu is all cut up, my mushrooms are all cut up, and so are my scallions. So now we're going to put right them in the now, frying pan. I have about a tablespoon of oil waiting to be heated up. Once the oil is shim simmering, I'm going to add the tofu, the carrots, the red cabbage, um, which by the way I'm adding only um, half of the red cabbage. Um, and then I'm going to also add the scallion, the mushrooms, and one tablespoon of the hoisin sauce. And you're going to cook this until the vegetables are softened, so about four minutes. Add a little bit of salt and pepper and then you're done. It's nice and colorful and I'm going to start stirring it up and this is going to cook for four minutes before we prepare our actual egg I just stirred in a tablespoon of hoisin sauce just to add a little bit of flavor. I've also added salt and pepper. So now we're going to fill the wontons. I have prepared my Pyrex by putting two tablespoons of oil all over the bottom of it. So it's ready to go when I'm ready to go. Um, and I also have a small bowl of hot water from the tap. Um, and I have my clean dry surface right here. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to lay one at a time these wrappers down in like a diamond shape. So let me take one out. Okay. So here you go. They already have a little bit of stuff. So you're going to lay them down like a diamond like this. Can you see? Okay, so I have it laid down like a diamond. And then the next thing you're going to do is, let me get my spoons. Spoons at my frying pan right here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to spoon about two tablespoons of filling into the center. So let's do that together. One. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to roll one side in. You're going to want to make this as linear as possible. Then as you fold over, you're going to want to tuck it in so that it's kind of tight. So you're going to tuck it under. You can add a little bit of water right there so that it stays tucked. Then you're going to do the bottom. Pull that up. By the way, put a little bit of hot water right there so that it sticks when you pull it up. And make sure you tuck that in a little bit. And the next thing you want to do is put another little bit of hot water on the edges and you're going to fold that up and tuck that under. Lastly, you're going to take your tip that's right here, right here, you're going to put a little bit more water on it with your finger like this. You're going to roll it under, bring it around, and fold it like that. So you get a tight little egg roll. I'm going to do a few more with you guys so you know. Then place it right there down in your, py in your Pyrex or your baking sheet. Let's do another one. So, trust me, the first time I'm doing this, it's it's a little bit, little bit intimidating. So, diamond shape, down, about two tablespoons. I put it, I put two tablespoons in that one, and it felt like it was a little empty. I don't know why, maybe it was just me. But I'm gonna stick with the directions. Otherwise, I'm gonna wind up overfilling. So, finger in the water, and you line the edges like glue, and you bring that over, and you tuck it under the food a little bit just like that, right? Like you tuck it in, like you're tucking it to sleep. Then you're gonna do the side edge. Push, I pushed down a little bit, as you can see. Then I brought that up and I tucked in the edge like that. Then again, on this side, 
with the water. Tuck it in, tuck it in on the side. Make sure you just keep everything tight. Keep pushing everything in. And then um, put a little bit of water on the tip of the, like an envelope. And then you bring it around. There you go. Another perfect egg roll. If this is my this is my first time making egg rolls. If I can do it, you guys can do it. So now I'm gonna finish the rest of the egg rolls, and hopefully, if you're doing this with me, if you have the wonton wrappers and you're making egg rolls with me, I hope you're having as much fun as I am right now. So I went. So these egg rolls are ready to go in the oven, and according to the directions, we are to brush one tablespoon of vegetable oil over the egg rolls. Um, if you don't have one, you can just rub a little bit of oil over the top. Or if you have a culinary brush, you can just easily sweep over these egg rolls with some oil. Now it says you're supposed to bake them until they're golden and crisp, about 20 minutes, and flip halfway through. Now the directions don't say if I should do that at 10 minute intervals or if I should do it every 20 minutes, like flip them, put them in for 20, flip them, put them in for another 20. So I'm going to check on them after 10 minutes and see how they look. That's why I love glass plates. I can look underneath and see if they're actually coming. So it's now time for me to sweep some oil over these and get them in the oven. The lovely part about baking the egg rolls is while well, yes we did use a little bit of oil on them you're saving on the excess oil that you would get from say a typical Chinese fast food restaurant egg roll that's been deep fried and there's lots of fatty meats in it or etc so we're saving on a lot of nutrition we're being more nutritious this way so while the egg rolls are in the oven we're going to be working on the slaw now I have two mixing bowls right here and um, it says in a small bowl, so let's use the smaller bowl. We're going to mix together the remaining hoisin sauce. I believe this is about a tablespoon, so I'm just going to squeeze this in. But if you have hoisin sauce at home, you would be using about a tablespoon. One thing I hate about these little bottles is it makes it really hard for me to get it all out. So, it's like ketchup bottles. Get the so knife. I got as much hoisin sauce out as I could. It actually winds up looking like a teaspoon, so maybe I used too much on the tofu. I don't know. And then it says include two te two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. So here's our rice wine vinegar. Let me get my tablespoon, which was from the tofu. I'm not going to dirty another one because tofu isn't like chicken or anything else. You know, you're not going to get sick from using a spoon that's been used. So two. So one. Two. We have a little bit left over. Um, and then half of the sesame seed oil. Here we go. I actually have a bottle of sesame seed oil. I love the way it smells. So half. Half of this is two, two and a half tablespoons. So you'd be putting in two and a half tablespoons of the sesame oil at this time. And then it says add salt and pepper. So I'm going to add a little bit of the sea salt, just a little bit. And then it also says to add the soy sauce, so you don't want to add too much salt because soy sauce has a lot of it. Um, and this is four packages, and each one of these is, it doesn't say, but I'm going to measure it. Let's see. We'll do the tablespoon test. So each one of these is a tablespoon, so you're going to want to be adding four tablespoons of soy sauce. So now we're just going to stir this up, and this basically is the sauce for our egg rolls. So we're going to let that sit on the side and it's going to look like this. I can't, it, it moves every time I go to show you. So we're going to let this sit on the side. Next up we have our larger bowl and we're going to start on our slaw. So you're going to take the remaining rice wine vinegar, which is about, I guess, a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. Then you're going to take the sesame oil, which is again about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And then we're going to add to this um, salt and pepper, and you're going to take the remaining red cabbage. Take the remaining red cabbage. There we go. You're going to also add the um, the regular cabbage, the green cabbage. Put that in there. And then we're also going to add our, our radish. Now they said two cups. This is actually two and a half cups. And now I'm going to mix this together. And this is our slaw. So now the slaw is completely mixed up in the oil and the vinegar. So it's kind of like an Asian variation of what I said in the other videos where you add a variation of a vinegar and an oil. So that's ready to go. Now all we have to do is check on our egg rolls and once they're done, well we have to flip them once and then pretty much the meal is just about done in the 10 minutes that you're waiting for the egg rolls to be done. You can do your dishes and your cleanup. So after you're done eating, you don't have to worry about anything. So the directions as par plated, they say to, um, 
Golden Crisp about 20 minutes. I've had mine in about a half hour and I flipped them at about 20 minutes in and now I'm just going to leave them in for another 10 minutes. Now I do have it on 400, I did follow all their instructions, but um, I'm also using a glass, I'm using Pyrex baking dish. I think if you use a darker aligned baking dish or if you have them over tin foil, they'll probably crisp a lot faster. So keep that in mind depending on what kind of baking dish you're baking them in. Um, it will determine how long they're going to be in the oven. But with the glass Pyrex, it's taking me about 40 minutes. So it'll be faster on a darker, you know, they do show a darker thing right here. Now we already have our slaw ready, ready to go. It's been soaking in the oil and vinegar and it smells great. So um, I'm going to take these out in, in, I'm going to take them out in 10 minutes and we're going to start plating them. So I've just taken my egg rolls out of the oven. As you can see, they're nice and crispy. Um, they're still sizzling. You could probably hear it. And I'm going to let them cool down for a few minutes, and then I'm going to plate them. Now the picture shows them cut diagonally, so I'm going to do that as well, see how they look cut diagonally, and I'm going to serve them with some sauce. So I plated this slaw, and I understand that this might be a hard ingredient to find, this radish. So you could probably substitute the radish with red cabbage, green cabbage, and maybe some sliced carrots, like a typical regular coleslaw. But instead of using the typical coleslaw ingredients of, maybe, of mayonnaise, etc., you can just use your so sesame oil and your rice wine vinegar to have that flavor of the Asian without maybe having to go through great lengths to get this Asian vegetable. Also for the dipping sauce, I have transferred it from the mixing bowl into a measuring cup. This is a one-fourth measuring cup. You can use a little bowl. I just find it simpler to have in a little bowl like this. Now I'm going to serve up the egg roll. So I have one right here. And I'm going to slice it the way they showed it. So I've sliced it semi-diagonal. It's very hot. i got to say that. But um, inside, it looks quite pretty. The tofu looks cooked. The vegetables look cooked right there. And then it's ready to go. There are 10, um, I did fill up 10 um, egg rolls, which is a lot. But this is supposed to be a regular meal. I could see this actually, instead of being a meal, being a great starter or a great side dish to um, maybe have one on the side and then have um, maybe a different Asian-inspired main meal because I feel like having... Just a whole bunch of egg rolls as your main dish just to be a little bit too much, just in my opinion. But overall, or maybe just a great snack or a great lunch, but definitely not a dinner, and that's what this was intended to be. But either way, I think this is great, and I'm going to have this posted on my Instagram. I hope you guys found this easy to follow. Um, I'm going to try to include a detailed list of all the ingredients I used and um, the exact measurements, just in case you missed it. Um, it might not be updated right away, but if you, if you check back, I definitely will have the list up there, or I'll try to have it up there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please follow me on Instagram. I'm Recycled Stardust.